at the end of this Mass, Marcia Dolorosa will be taken and put away until Holy Week. So we thank you for enjoying her. Just say a prayer to Our Lady of Sorrows toward the end of Mass and help her to ask her to help us to understand sorrow and understand pain. Not technically, not cognitively, but emotionally. You want to understand pain, become a doctor, read all the manuals, and we'll understand the cause of this pain or that pain. But we're talking about pain that keeps us distance from God, any pain that we might have in our own lives, um, psychological, physical. Um, we don't want to understand so much the, the etiology of it, but we want to understand how we can use pain to get closer to God. <clears throat> and that's a very important aspect of Catholic faith, that pain, now I don't mean we should cause pain, but pain is, is a way of testing us, especially during the season of Lent, and it, to endure it with giving praise to God. Remember that we used to say, uh, offer it, offer it to Jesus, offer it to Mary. O offer your pain, whatever the pain is. And even as we're going through this Lenten journey, I do the same, offering my niece's pain to God that he heal her, that Mary watch over her. And there are many of our intentions. It's very important to, to take pain as not a punishment of God, but as a way of getting close to God and not denying pain. A, who, a good example of that was, and we all saw him, uh, John Paul II, he refused to resign, remember way, way back when, when he was suffering Parkinson's and other things and speech disability, and he never resigned. There was a, a, this is too much for me, I'm gonna go relax, go to bed and make somebody else pope. Um, he, I think on some level he wanted the world to see him in pain and going on and, and activating his, his life. He didn't want to show to the world. Years ago when I was in the hospital, I had a burn accident and my nephew came in, he was maybe high school, um, and he said, how did this happen, Uncle Louie? And I explained what happened with the burn. And he says, no, how did it happen to you? I said, I'm talking about me. He says, no, you're a priest. You're not supposed to have accidents like this. And I thought that was so simplistically beautiful, um, but it doesn't work. No, we all have pain, no matter what the pain. I hope it's not self-inflicted, but pain is ours. It's part of the human condition. And Jesus entered the human condition and bore pain so that when we have pain, we can unite ourselves with him. When we have pain, we can unite ourselves to Mary, who watched her son in pain. And I can't imagine the level of pain she had. So it's important for us to realize that there are so many beautiful elements of our faith that are applicable for daily living and daily suffering. But that's not the homily, that's just the intro. Um, <laughs> today, in the, in the first book of Deuteronomy, interesting how, uh, excuse me, Daniel, interesting how Daniel is praising God and acknowledging our sinfulness. You, you, get, you did this for us, you did this for us, but yet we, we, we don't listen to you, we break your rules, we break your commandments, and we deserve punishment. Now, this has nothing to do with pain. This is punishment, spiritual punishment, and distance from God. And we want to live by your law. Teach us the law of Deuteronomy, the law of Moses, the law of the prophets. So that's what, that's what Daniel is doing. He's acknowledging our corporate sinfulness. And we all, we all can identify with that, with him. Yesterday was the anniversary of the second year of Ukraine and Russia at war. And now we, we've entered the third year. Think of the pain of those people and how it looks like God is punishing them. But our faith is that God is not punishing 
them, the Ukrainians or the, the Russians who have, who have died, they, Russia and of course the Ukraine going back, are just showing human frailty, how weak people are, how in need, I'll say need, but it's not, it's not a need, how lustful they are toward power and possession and how evil it makes some people become. My whole philosophy slash theology about Russia and Ukraine is the devil. Uh, I am sure Satan inspired the leader of Russia to attack these people, these sovereign people, attack and destroy. And that's been his goal in the last few years. And yes, great nations are helping, but we'll stay out of that political thing for a second. But the, the power of Satan in the world, and Satan inspires us negatively to do his will. War and bloodshed, rape and pillage, definitely Satan's will. So I have to really say, as politically and significant a person as the leader of Russia is, he's being manipulated by Satan. Now, not all of us will acknowledge that. But in the scriptures today, we have the acknowledgement of our own sinfulness. So if the leader of Russia read this section from, from Daniel, he could very easily say, oh, God's talking about me. God's talking about my actions. And I should be shamefaced. Now, here's a tender challenge from Jesus. Sometimes Jesus hits us right between the eyes. And he says to us today in the gospel, don't judge. So I, I, I just judged the leader of Russia. Motivated, I believe, by Satan. Jesus is saying, don't judge. Because you'll be judged. And be careful when you offer a gift to God. Make sure your gift is pure because God will accept it. If it's not pure, he's not accepting it. And when you are rewarded by God for giving, for loving, for forgiving, for causing peace, for breaking bread with people, you'll be rewarded. You'll be rewarded in such a way that you won't be able to hold it, your rewards. And he uses a, a flower metaphor. I've got to put this on the floor just for a second. He used the flower metaphor. Okay, so imagine you went shopping and you bought you know, three pounds of flour and you had nothing to carry it in. They didn't have plastic bags and they didn't have tote bags. They had bags, but who knows what kind. And he said, you will be, if you forgive and you love and you do charity and you pray for peace, you'll be rewarded so much so that it will be poured into your garments and it'll be packed down and it'll be overflowing. That's, that's what we just read. Other than knowing that he's, God is telling us to open up our garments because he's going to put all the good and blessings into our garments, it doesn't make sense. But if we read it that way, which is the way it was meant to be, written, that God is going to give us so much that we won't have space in our lives or the folds of our garments to hold all his blessings. Now that's a real challenge for us today. During the season of Lent, we could look at it more carefully and realize that as, as Christians, we are obligated to do good. The opening prayer, asking God to give us the strength especially during this season, to avoid sin, abstain from sin. Oh, people say, well, I'm, I don't need chocolate during Easter. Oh, what is this, Lent? Uh, I, I don't need ice cream. You know, I don't care what you do with that stuff. But abstain from, from pain, abstain from hurting people, abstain from gossip, abstain, and the list goes on and on. You know, yeah, you want to give up because that'll give you control of your body. Good, good, good. Because that empty stomach will trigger in our heads, why am I hungry? 
I'm hungry because I'm sacrificing, I'm giving it up for, for Lent, but I'm in control of my body. By giving up something, I'm showing control of my body. I will eventually eat again, but I'm giving control of my body. And that goes back to our head and heart. Why? I'm giving control to God. I'm asking God to move on in versus allowing Satan to encourage us to go this way or that way. By abstaining from sin, we're abstaining from Satan. We're abstaining from evil. And if giving up water, wine, food, bread, I don't care what you give up, is an example of that to remind us that we're abstaining to ward off evil, great. In the Middle Ages, I hope none of us do it now, but if you do, you do. Um, there was flagellation during Lent. Flagellations where you get a whip and you'd whip yourself, not on, on top of your clothing, but on bare skin. So you'd suffer. Well, that suffering was supposed to cause the person doing the flagellation awareness of his mortality and his dependence on God, and a sacrifice to take this suffering so others could be free. We don't have to go to that extent. There's enough suffering to go around in this world as it is. And now we go back to opening thoughts. So look at suffering as a way of getting closer to God. And we are encouraged to pray, to spend more time in prayer, private prayer, or public prayer. Again, becoming more aware of God in our lives. And as we're doing that, we're becoming aware of Satan in our lives. So we're pushing Satan aside, bringing God in more and more each day. Through our abstaining, through our prayer, and through our understanding suffering. 